who jumps out of perfectly good airplanes in the name of science, Mr. C. Bonjour, mes amis et mes students. Good morning, my friends and my students. My job today is to make sure that I review everything that is on the test for you. And I have good news about that. Allow me to show you this. It won't take long. I have my core computer with me. And here it comes. Look what I have done for you. Yeah, here it comes. Maybe. Thank you, Lord, that it came up. And here it is. Look at this. You're welcome. Little Moana. Look at that. Is that a work of beauty or what? That lists all the topics that are on tomorrow's test for you ones in eighth grade. Woohoo! It's all there. So, would it. Mr. Chamber, would it be a good idea for me to have my journal out right now and be all ready to maybe jot a few things down that I don't have in my journal that you discuss? You know, that would be an excellent idea. I recommend it. So I'm going to tell you all the topics right now. And I only have minutes to do it. Here we go. So I'm going to ask you the six kinds of atoms from the periodic table. So I am going to ask you the bookend elements that are on the sun. H4 hydrogen. Now get it right. It's he, H-E, helium. Pronounce it. Uh, he, H-E. Oh yeah, helium. Yeah. Then you've got the two elements found in our atmosphere. O2 oxygen, about 19%. And... What do you have next? You've got nitrogen at about 78%. We've discussed all of this. Then, how about after that? Then you've got carbon, the element found in our tissues, living tissues. And then we've got Fe iron um, found in a lot of um, rocks, minerals, found in the soil. Where? Like even in Arizona, like in Australia, and on Mars, of course. Okay? So anyway, those babies. Okay? So, and I'm going to ask you, what are the building blocks everything is made of? Elements. That's why it says periodic table of the elements. And you saw that video that said there's about 92 natural elements. Everything is made of a combination of those. So... And when you combine element and element, you get a compound. Element, element, compound. Are you going to ask us compound? Good chance. Element, element, makes a compound. Okay? So anyway, all of that stuff. Let's see what else I've got here. Oh, yeah. I have the gas. Let's see where it is. Here it is. I have the gas principles, and you can better believe I'm going to ask you these gas principles. Here they are, right there. Okay, the first one, if the temperature goes up on a gas, you've got a gas. So we heat this air up, it's gas, right? Nitrogen, oxygen. We heat it up, what's going to happen to it? It's going to have more pressure, more force, more push. Okay, T goes up, P goes up, there it is. Temperature goes up, then the pressure goes up of that gas. The second principle, the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. It takes up more space. So there you go. T goes up, P goes up, T goes up, V goes up. And then I had this wonderful picture for you that illustrated that. I think I can show that to you again, maybe. Let's see if I can. Maybe not. I'd like to if I could. Let's see if it comes up. Do I still have that up? You know, it looks like I don't have that hot air balloon up anymore, and that's okay. So, hot air balloon illustrates that. You heat up the air in a hot air balloon, and it has more pressure. T goes up, P goes up, and it takes up more space, so it fills up the hot air balloon. Okay? 
So anyway, and I actually had, I actually had all of that right there. And then if the pressure goes up of a gas, the volume goes down. See that? T up, V down. So if you squeeze gas into a container like a scuba tank, it takes up less space. It's compressed, takes up less space. Compressed just means squeezed. So you squeeze it into a smaller space. Pressure goes up. V, volume, goes down of that gas. I'm going to ask you all three of these. Yep, I'm going to ask you all three. My guess is most of you put it in your journal because you want to get this right tomorrow. Come on, Mr. C, get it straight. Okay, there we go. All righty then. So, I will definitely ask you that. Okay, then I'm going back to my list. I gotta make sure I get all this in. How are we doing time-wise? Good, I'm doing great. Okay, <clears throat> so those were the gas principles. So, um, let's see. How an atom is built. Here you go. Diagram for a basic atom. What do you have in the center? You've got protons, and then you've got neutrons in the center, right? The protons shouldn't hold together, but they do because of the strong nuclear force, the strong force. It overcomes the repelling force that, like electrical charges, should push each other away or repel, but they don't because of the strong force, the strong nuclear force, S, N, F. And then you've got, boop, 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 boop. you've got electrons, and the electrons are way outside the nucleus. Hey, when I ask you what is the center of an atom, what are you going to say? Nucleus, the center of an atom, nucleus, the nucleus. So. Allergies, so I gotta take care of them. Woo. So anyway, uh, the, again, the parts of an atom. So, and I'm gonna try to find this at the end if I have time. Okay, so, <clears throat> pardon me, so you've got protons in the center, neutrons in the center, same amount, same amount of electrons outside, and what do we think? I'm, I'm definitely going to ask you this. What is the modern, um, this is the name for the modern um, model for a cloud. Now I'll show you what we used to think it was like. We used to think this was a proper model for an atom. I think this is a lithium atom with three protons lithium. So we thought the electrons were in these specific orbits going around the nucleus. Nucleus! But that's not what we now think. Scientists have done a lot of studies about this and they go, eh, that doesn't sound right. We think it's like this actually now. We think, look what it says. We think it's like a cloud. I will ask you this tomorrow. So what is the modern model that uh, physicists now think atoms are like? A fuzzy cloud. And here's why. Well, this is going to give you a headache. Are you ready? I hope you took Tylenol today. Listen to what it says. There was, I think he was German. There was a Dr. Schrodinger and he did work on the electrons going around the nucleus. And here's what he found out. He found out that each electron, actually we don't really know where it is because it doesn't travel just like a particle. It travels like a wave. 
so you can't really know exactly where the electron is and they travel very fast so they're whirring around in these orbits that we're not exactly sure of so that's why we think now that atoms are like fuzzy clouds so anyway I'll ask you that for sure now I'm going to ask you this you've seen this on the fringes but not directly so I am going to tell you this directly right now and you are going to scurry to get your writing tool and your journal open to where you want to put this in because it may probably may not and probably not going to be there so here's what it is on the periodic table of the elements ta-da you've got hydrogen that's got a one right there um, in its box and then you've got helium with a two what is that one and two that is the atomic number Oh, spell atomic for you? Sure. A-T-O-M-I-C. Atomic. Number. The atomic number of an atom is the number of protons in the nucleus. I will ask you that tomorrow. The atomic number equals the number of protons. You can see that right here. This is actually showing you helium. See that? In the center, you've got two protons. So it's got to be helium. It has an atomic number of two. If it only had one proton, what would it be? Hydrogen. So the number of protons in the nucleus is the atomic number. That is so going to be on tomorrow's test. How do you like that? A little... Uh, pre-spring break uh, favor your direction. Anyway, we now think um, atoms are like fuzzy clouds. So, is there a lot we don't know about atoms? <laughs> oh yeah. We've really only learned all of this about atoms in the last 100, 100, I don't know, 20 years. That's most of history. We had no idea about all of this. So, what does that tell you? God is just sitting up in heaven going, it took you long enough to figure that. And we might not even be right about the fuzzy cloud hypothesis for the current model of an atom. That could be all wrong. So I'll tell you who knows what it's like. Jesus, because he made them. He made those atoms. And he knows all about the forces that he used and the particles okay now do I still have this I wanted to show you this all right I'm looking 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 is this still up there so I've got to find this for you I wanted to show you this again so these are subatomic particles I want to show you this list I had it so where did it go oh it just sneaked off Anyway, you're being very patient. Are you usually like that? Okay, here they come. Subatomic particles. There was a nice little chart where they're listed. Let's see if I can show you that. And this is going to give you a headache. Here it is. Maybe. I'm taking long enough. I know I am. All right, I'm not going to try much longer. Mr. C, you're being pretty patient yourself. Well, I'm trying. I may end up just reading you these. I showed you this before. Um, the names for all the subatomic particles. Here they are. Oh, I can get them. Here they are. All right, here they are. <laughs> look at the list, and we don't know them all, but look at them. Tomorrow I'm going to ask you, give me a couple of subatomic particles 
smaller particles then, and you won't be able to use protons, neutrons, and electrons. So you can see quarks there, and leptons, and neutrinos, and muons, and top, and there are um, top and bottom quarks, and up and down quarks, and there are uh, Higgs particles, and photons, and gluons. Good grief. You're going to have to give me two of the other subatomic particles other than you can't use protons, electrons, and neutrons. Now some of you won't have written any of these down and you'll go, oh no, I've got to give two subatomic particles and I knew I should have written a couple of those on that chart that Mr. Chambers gave us. I knew I should have written down so I'm just going to have to go with protons and neutrons. And then I'm going to, as I look over the test, going to say, and I'm just going to have to go with wrong minus one. So you might want to put down quarks and leptons and gluons and photons and neutrinos and muons and Higgs. And that's just starters. There's a whole bunch more. So do we know them all? No, we do not. We keep slamming atoms together in particle accelerators, huge machines that are miles around underground. Like in Switzerland, there's a big one, I think. And they smash atoms together, and then they kind of chart what the particles are that come apart. So, and they're learning new ones all the time. Okay, back to the list of stuff. Okay, my friends, what do we got? So you've got to know all of that. Okay, I got to get off atoms now. So the atomic number is number of protons. Okay, you know that I'm going to ask you these, the Fomen pillars. F for fossils, O for old age, A for accident, M for mutation, N for natural selection, and then B for Big Bang. The evidence from the fossils. No tweeners, no ape men, evidence for a great global flood because all those, all those animals and plants and humans were buried rapidly under the sediment. So anyway, what do the fossils tell us? No evolution. Then we've got old age. Is it really billions? No, there's heaps of evidence. It's only thousands. You know my favorites. Earth's too hot. The moon's too hot. Rocks have too much water and gas in them. It should have leaked out a long time ago. If they're billions of years old, they must only be thousands of years old. Okay, then you've got a faint sun. It should be way bigger and way brighter, but it's not. Um, if it were billions of years old, it would be way bigger and way brighter. Then you've got DNA in dinosaur fossils. It should have all broken down in a few thousand years. It hasn't. So it ain't that old, right? So it ain't billions. It ain't millions. So and then you've got red blood cells in those dinosaur fossils. Okay, and then you've got the two um, supposed mechanisms of evolution that don't work at all. They just do not work. Mutations, they're rare, they hurt, they're harmful, or they kill. Okay, so, and you've got to have trillions of good ones, and they're bad. Most mutations, almost all of them, are bad, bad news. Doesn't make sense. And then you've got natural selection that doesn't even cause things to change. It just gets rid of things that do change and don't match their habitat. By the way, I'm going to ask you for two of the um, divine designs of the snow leopard. He couldn't have waited around to get his equipment, so you're going to give me two of his divine designs. I can't review them. You should have had them. You should have them in your journal. Snow leopard, couple of divine designs should have. Them. Okay, and then the Big Bang issues or problems. Where did the particles come from? Why did the particles attract? They wouldn't have that much mass. Then they wouldn't have that much gravity. So they wouldn't even come together to make a big explosion that supposedly happened. But don't bring up those questions. They just pretend, well, we don't care about that. There was a big explosion. Yeah, but what about the other things that had to happen first? We don't care about that. Well, you should. It doesn't make sense then. Okay. And then the big explosion, which wouldn't have uh, caused order. It would cause disorder and chaos. It wouldn't have caused everything to rotate. It would just cause straight line, <laughs> straight line, kaboom, movement. So, and then what actually we see, I'll read this to you. Here's what it says. Okay. The Big Bang that supposedly began the universe without God wouldn't cause specific masses, gravity, spacing, and speeds of the galaxy, stars, planets, and moons to form. They all had to be specifically designed and created. 
And they were. Both science and the Bible give evidence for the creation of the universe. So, triple R, triple R, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Phillips. See you on Friday.